Guys, I'm actually so excited. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. In today's video, we are going to be finally revealing the exciting Toki Gecko upgrade. Yup, that's right. After showing you guys how I was planning on doing a bunch of upgrades into this year, we're finally done the first upgraded enclosure, and that is for Tiki, my male captive bred toke gecko. So in today's video, I'm gonna be building the enclosure, showing you how I did that, and then we're gonna move him into the new tank and see how he likes it. So I'm pretty excited to get into this with you guys, explain the whole process, and see how, oh, I don't know, I'm losing my train of thought because honestly, nothing gets me more excited than enriching and providing my animals with better care, better enclosures. That's what it's all about. So join me in this exciting endeavor. One thing I wanna make mention of is that I'm gonna provide links down below to a lot of the products that I use and that you'll see in this video. But if you're thinking of doing the same sort of thing, you can easily find them and purchase them and have them shipped to your home for your convenience. Also, keep in mind that by using the links provided, I will make a small little commission on each sale at no expense to yourself. So doing so actually benefits both of us. Also, if you want to support this channel in any other ways, I do also have a Patreon page linked down below. And guys, I just got my stickers in and I'm just waiting for my envelopes to arrive so I can ship out your thank you letters. And I also have a merch store, which I am now repping my very popular uh, sweater that a lot of you guys are buying. So thank you so much. It means the world to me. All right, let's go ahead now and get into this. For today's question of the day, I wanna ask you if you have any intentions to upgrade some of your beloved pets. Maybe you're planning on setting up a new enclosure as well. You know, you might have a little baby bearded dragon that's graduating into an adult size ovarium, or I don't know, maybe you have a bunch of crocodile skinks that keep popping out more babies from eggs and could really use a new home. Nonetheless, let me know what you're working on. I'm excited to see, and as always, Always, I'll give your comment a heart and hopefully we can engage in a bit of a conversation. All right, so here we are guys. The tank is looking incredible already. We have the screen that I cut to fit, the enclosure, it's just the uh, mosquito screen, like patio door replacement, you know, like fix kit screen. I'll link it down below. Got some nice pieces of cork here. The background is in, and of course, I went out and got an Arcadia Jungle Dawn for this enclosure. It's gonna sit over top here. And then we also have the Arcadia 6% UVB lamp, T5, that is, oh my gosh, we do not need that expensive bulb falling. And then, well, I have to take the sun blaster out, but this will be the reflector fixture that'll be housing the UVB light. So, Tiki, and my unnamed female are gonna be getting the best of the best UVB Arcadia Jungle Dawn lights for full spectrum lighting and then a nice basking light which will probably go in the back corner. This enclosure is pretty big guys and they're gonna get lots of time to come out too if they feel like it. Climb up out of the tank and we can even make some kind of jungle gym 
that goes up here. I've been thinking about some fun stuff to kind of get some of the animals to interact with me more, but more on that later. Alas, next what we're gonna do is put in the hydroton, which is our drainage layer. And if you don't know already, essentially some clay balls that'll line the bottom and create a drainage space so that if there's excess water, it drains into there and doesn't saturate the substrate, which will be over top and separated by this mesh. And you know, it'll get full of anaerobic bacteria if it's allowed to stay waterlogged. So it just allows the water to drain through and sit in that space. I'm really not worried about anything like that. So I'm gonna do a really thin layer because ultimately this tank isn't gonna get that wet most of the time anyways. It's gonna be pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and do that now and get our drainage layer in. But before we do that, I figured I would go ahead and install the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED system, as well as the T5 fixture housing the Arcadia 6% UVB bulb. All right guys, so there we go. We have our substrate and drainage layer. Good enough for what we're doing here. A few inches of substrate before we hit the drainage, which is right down here, as you can see. So we'll be able to do some planting, which is the next sort of thing we're doing. So now I'm gonna try and figure out my piece de resistance, escape this baby. So it's time to take a look at all the wood and hardscape we have. And then following that, I'm going to plant it. So let's go ahead and start that. Okay guys, so tentatively speaking, I'm pretty fond of this as the scape. Now I know it looks very bare in some areas, but hold on your horses. I am going to be putting some pretty large plants here. Tentatively, we're gonna go with this before we add some more little branches and leaf litter on the ground. But for now, we're gonna add a few of the larger plants into the enclosure and see what we're left with for open space and room. I'm kind of liking how this looks, you know, we have the uh, one piece that comes up here, hatchlings could be hiding in it, it's hollow in the middle. I purposely angled these pieces here so that we have some openings to, you know, peer into, hopefully get some funny shots of them coming out to eat. And I did the same here, I actually broke some of the cork to make this hole a little bit bigger. Should be good. Let's proceed with the planting. I have a few, I think they're Dracaena. Honestly, they were just labeled as like those fresh air plants that purify air in your home and nothing else for a label. Imagine if we sold reptiles like that. But in any case, yes, I think they're a species of Dracaena. So you can see already that one of these takes up a decent amount of space. So I'm thinking I'm gonna plant one between those and the other one in the back there and see how they do. And in the foreground, I have a few smaller, like four inch potted plants that we're gonna plant along the front. Naturally, these have all been grown for a few weeks and rinsed completely to make sure that they're devoid of any type of pesticide. So you can see the root system's pretty clean there, washed off, so yeah. <laughs> Guys, I don't know about you, but I'm really liking how that looks so far. I was really hoping to get something to grow on the back wall. So I may try and sneak behind here and plant some ficus pumila or something at some point. 
See if we can guide it to grow and cover the wall because that looks so cool. I don't know, I think I'll leave that for the future. But now we do have some space in the front here. All right guys, so I just added a lemon button fern and I'm gonna tell you straight up that if you are a beginner plant grower and you really wanna try ferns, I can't think of a species that is better suited for you than this one. Honestly, they're probably the hardiest fern species I've ever kept. So if you wanna add some ferns to your vivarium but you're scared you're gonna kill them because of you know low humidity and things like that, definitely try the lemon button fern and let me know how that goes for you. Okay, so here guys, check it out. The scape is looking pretty solid. I'm going to see about maybe adding one or two branches that I can put along here that come to the front. so I came up with a design that I'm pretty happy with and I'm probably going to leave it at this for now we'll see how this goes I can always add some more wood up here I just don't think I would like the look of just like a horizontal piece I don't know just look kind of weird to have this just lay across or something so I am gonna leave it like this for now again the geckos are free to climb up here and just be up on the cork and it's easy for them to, you know, have access to everything. But yeah, I, I get it. I don't want to have all this wasted space either. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. But alas, here is the final scape before we go ahead and add some leaf litter dressing as well as some springtails. And also I'm going to be adding the water dish. And then we can go ahead and get Mr. Tiki in here, which is pretty exciting. All right, guys, I'm going to be using the Exoterra Equatorial Forest Floor Substrate. Um, there's a link to learn more about it up above if you like. I really like this foliage. It's the nice Ardesia leaves. So we're going to go ahead and sprinkle a bunch of this on the surface of the substrate to give it that real like forest floor feel, you know? Adding leaf litter over top of this substrate will also provide our springtails that we're going to add next with shelter to hide in. It also provides them with decomposable organic matter that they can feed off of. Alright friends, now what I want to do is go ahead and spray down the enclosure. If you saw my last video where we did an update on ET, my black breasted leaf turtle, you'll recall that I said there are tons of springtails in his enclosure. So what I'm just going to do is take a piece of wood from there. So now as you can see, there are loads of springtails in the enclosure to help control mold and, you know, add to the bioactivation of the substrate. Well everyone, here we are. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm so happy with how this turned out and I think Tiki is absolutely going to love living in here. Here's our Jungle Dawn LED, the UVB light and his basking. Besides air purification with these specific species, plants will also help maintain the relative humidity levels. All right, friends, so here we are. The Toke Gecko enclosure in the back. This is a 18 by 18 by 24. 
what most would consider the minimum size requirement for a pair of Tokyo Geckos. And if you don't already know, in it currently is housed my male Tiki, who we're rehousing today, and his two offspring, who I commonly refer to as the Tokyo Twins. I'm going to be keeping the Tokyo Twins in this enclosure for the time being while I decide what to do with them. I do have a lot of sentimental attachment to the Toke Twins, however I'm trying to think about the future and assuming that when Tiki gets paired up with this new female and they start having more offspring, I need to really think about how I'm going to do things. So right now where I'm at, I am considering selling the Toke Twins. I haven't decided for sure yet, but think about it. They're going to be adults in the next six months or so and will need the same size enclosure as Tiki and I just don't have room for that. So if I keep producing more and more Tokes and keeping them all, it's just not gonna work. And if you weren't aware, odds are I can't house them with him. First of all, if they're female, they might breed with him. Really like to avoid that. And there's a good chance that the females will be aggressive towards one another. All right, so guys, the exciting part is here. We are going to somehow get Tiki out of there and move him into the new vivarium, which is looking really nice, if I might say. I'm so excited to see how he's going to respond to the full spectrum lighting, to the UVB. I think it's gonna be super nice, so hopefully we'll see some fantastic results with that. Well, let's go ahead and get this boy out of there. All right guys, so I sort of had this fun idea of how you can get Tiki from this enclosure to this door, which you can kind of see the edge of. I was thinking, since he loves his food so much, we can offer him a soup worm and see if he'll cross the whole ledge of the shelf, hop onto this door, and go into the new vivarium. Wish me luck. I'm hoping it's gonna work. It'd be a lot less invasive than having to catch him in a 32 ounce deli cup, which I'll add that he barely fits in anymore. So let's try this method out. All right, guys, let's hope this works. Also really hoping that I'm not going to get a Toke twin coming for me instead. Tiki. Hey buddy, where are you? Oh, there he is. Come on, buddy. Tiki, come on. Let's go. Oh, you sneaky guy. This is gonna be harder than I thought. Tiki. Oh my gosh, the twins are here now. Oh, this is really gonna be harder than I thought. Come on, Tiki. Please, get out of here. Yep, 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 no. Since when are you afraid to come out? What is going on? What has gotten into you? Took a twin alert. Whoa, all right, you can have one too. Here. Yeah, your dad's leaving you. You gonna be okay with that? Mr. Teeks, come on, buddy. Please, let's not make this harder than it needs to be. Oh my gosh, silly me. Yeah, I really didn't plan that out well, did I? Just on the other side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, buddy. It's almost like he knows what's happening. Like, since when does this guy ever have a problem with coming out of the enclosure for food? Literally. Like, never. Never, ever. Come on, Tiki. All right, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, keep going, keep going. Don't be scared. He's like, no! <laughs> Tiki, come on. All right, guys, if we keep having this challenge, we may have to just resort to moving <laughs> moving him in by himself with a container unfortunately doesn't really seem to be working yeah they're gonna miss their dad i think they will all right guys so <laughs> that didn't work we're gonna have to probably grab the cork round that's back there that he's hiding in move him manually ourselves take him like that and move them in. It'll work out in the end, I'm sure. All right, guys, so this is probably the most invasive thing I've done with these geckos in a really long time, so wish me luck. I really hope I'm not gonna be stressing them out too much. No one is on this piece. Yeah, I think everyone is in that little cork. Oh, oh geez. Yep.
All right, hooligans. I'm not sure how to best go about this. I need to somehow get twins out. Notice how they're hiding on their teepee. Come on, guys. Tiki. This makes me feel. This makes me feel so bad about separating them, man. Oh, Tiki. Hey, buddy. He looks like he's gonna defend, though, which is kind of scary. Okay, buddy. Okay, so I really can't dilly daddle this process because the longer it takes, the more I can stress them out. So I'm gonna get this over with, I guess. Okay, so I got the twins separate. I just gotta get Tiki somehow. This is hard. Tiki, come on, buddy. Fortunately, I managed to pick up the branch that he was actually on and move it all the way over to go the ahead. other enclosure. And this worked just fine. There you go. Go for it. Well, look at him. Okay. <laughs> we did it. He's in the new enclosure, guys. Look how much room he has, too. Holy mackerel. That's a decent amount of space. Guys, that was actually really hard to do. I mean, these two have had their dad the whole time they've been alive. I feel, I do feel really guilty, but they're gonna be okay. Sure, he's obviously a little bit stressed out, but he'll settle in no time. Are you open to it? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. There you go, come on. Come on. There you go, big guy. The lighting is so good in here too, obviously. Great in here, Mr. Teeks. Absolutely great. Well, guys, I don't want to stress him out too much. We got him in his new enclosure. Plants, foliage, water dish. Lots of great court grounds for him to live and hide in. This is going to be exciting. And then in no time at all, we're going to introduce him to his future wifey and hope that they get along. Mr. Teeks, enjoy. This is the first time he's gonna have UVB, so I'm really happy about that too. Well guys, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm so happy with how this turned out. The enclosure looks really good. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the final turnout. You know me, I love to take advantage of opportunities to enrich my pets as a standard, as well as interact with them, stimulate them, give them the opportunity to come out of the enclosure if they want to do so. So, bearing that in mind, the animal isn't going to be limited to this space at all times. It'll get to come out and climb up. You know what I'm saying? It, he, tiki. So do keep that in mind as well. With all that being said, I want to thank you all so much today for watching my video. It means a lot to me. We're on our little road to 100K as one of my greatest milestones I've been working towards with my channel. And I'm so appreciative of each and every one of you. So without further ado, that is the end of today's video. I thank you all again. And I look forward to seeing you all on Friday for the next video. If you want to see more videos about Toki geckos, check out the link up above. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all in another video again soon. Bye, guys.